Well, we spend our lives searching for it, and it's the age-old question that many of us struggle to answer. How do we find true happiness? Recent research shows, as a nation, we're not overly happy. In fact, we're less happy than we were a year ago, dropping to 10th place in the world rankings. Society leads us to believe that we'll be happier if we have a higher paying job, a smaller waistline, a bigger house and a perfect marriage. And experts say this quest for happiness is in fact making us miserable. For today's agenda, I'm joined by psychologist Dr Susie Green from the Positivity Institute and author of Happy As, Lisa Portland. Good morning. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Lisa, I know you've made it your mission to, to get to the, to the nub of what makes us happy. What have you found? Um, look, I think I've found a number of different things. Um, happiness is defined in so many different ways. So a lot of us um, think of happiness as that ephemeral, transient emotion, which, um, you know, happens on a daily basis, but it's quick and it disappears quite quickly. Um, other people think of it as a sense of being more content. And finally, there's people that think of it um, from the perspective of, you know, the common good, the civic good, a life well led. So it really depends on what your concept of happiness is um, and how you're pursuing it. Um, there's also um, the construction of happiness for us is very interesting too in terms of um, how it's made and what we think it will be. So, for example, there's a number of different milestones that we think we need to reach to actually experience happiness. OK. Ultimately, though, I think I'm safe to say that we all want it. We're all searching yeah, yeah. for it, whatever form it comes in. Um, and yet, Susie, a lot of us are miserable in that pursuit. <laughs> why, why do you think that is? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, the I'll be happy when syndrome. Um, and I think there's a general, uh, I guess, um, misunderstanding of what it is. I mean, even scientifically speaking, which is my background, there's still a fair bit of mm. debate about, mm. about it, what it is. And in fact, I guess we're moving more towards the conception of well-being, which is a broader conception of, I guess, psychological well-being mm. and happiness being just one of the human emotions. Um, and other human emotions like fear and anger and sadness are equally as important. It's just if they tend to go to their clinical extremes that they become problematic. Mm -hmm. But even happiness is the same. And, and I usually say, you know, if you walk around with that big yellow smiley face all day, they will lock you up. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's interesting. Um, should we settle for content or are they, are they one in the same, Lisa? Um, I think that they're, they're slightly different, um, but certainly um, it's about the journey. Um, so there's um, something called, um, uh, you know, I'll be happy when mm. this happens. So I'll be happy when, you know, I have that job or I'm with that partner or if I look in that certain way. Um, and it's that arrival fallacy. So it's really about the journey that takes us to that particular place. You know, it's mm. as we're growing and we're stretching and we're challenging ourselves, those are the points when we really find ourselves happiest. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. How much of it, Susie, do you think is about stuff, about materialism? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to instil in my kids, focus on what you do have as opposed to what exactly. you don't have. But we're all caught up in this cycle of accumulating, mm. aren't we? Exactly. Although, interestingly, as you'd be aware, there's a movement towards minimalism and simplification yeah. at the moment too, which for me is just wonderful and I'm on my own, uh, I guess, uh, challenge there as well. Um, but we, there's been some research to show that investing in material possessions versus investing in experiences, that it's the experiences that lead to the, the longer life lasting uh, well-being than, than the material possessions. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, you learn to savour, and that's another area of research in positive psychology, um, where you actually do appreciate something for its beauty or perhaps its usefulness as well. But we have uh, what's known as habituation, so we just tend to habituate or take things for granted. Mm -hmm. We don't get that same burst of joy out of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. What about the connectivity? You know, we yes, live in this yeah. world now where we're so connected and yet we're disconnected, mm -hmm. and there's so so much comparison being made, isn't mm. there, on these social media webs, yeah. social media sites? How much is that affecting our, our mm. well-being? Do you think, Lisa? Well, I think that comparison is um, the thief of happiness. You probably have heard that before. And um, social media, you know, at its genesis is supposed to be very good in terms of, you know, it's connecting people, it's building relationships, which is very positive from the happiness perspective. Um, but it also gives us the opportunity to really compare ourselves to other people, not only the people within our social groups and within, you know, family and friends, but more broadly 
broadly, um, you know, we can compare ourselves to Beyonce or, you know, huge celebrities. And um, sometimes when we do that comparison, we, we find ourselves slightly unworthy or, you know, um, we haven't reached the things that they have. And um, that can make us feel unhappy. Mm, depleted even. Yeah. And speaking of social media, we asked uh, for your opinions on Facebook. Here's what some of you have had to say. Kerry writes, what is wrong with being content? No one is content anymore except me. I have a good family, love my job and my friends. When things go well, I'm happy. When things do not, I am not happy, but I'm content with my life at the moment. Mm. Annette says, happiness is in the heart of the beholder. I think, I, I think wanting what you don't have is making one unhappy. Mm. So either do something about it or be satisfied with what you have. Mm. And Susan posts, I just think some people are born happy and some are born miserable. Happiness comes from within yourself and is your own responsibility. Mm. Susie, you say we're born with 50% of predis predetermined happiness, is that yeah. right? Look, that was based on one study and the studies have varied in terms of, I guess, the genetic inheritability. Um, but more recently, we actually know it's not as fixed as what we thought it was. And, and, and that also relates to the concept of personality, which, you know, when I was at uni university, we were told it was fixed. There's no point trying to change it. That's uh -huh. just who you are. You're either born grumpy or born happy. But in fact, you know, through the science, neuroscience research, we know that things are actually um, more, we're more capable of change. And at this point in time, I, I guess that's the good news, but it takes effort and it takes persistence. So, you know, you may be um, not the happiest person or come from a gene pool of not the happiest group of people, but the good news is that with some effort and persistence and some support, you can shift your levels of wellbeing. Okay, yeah. and just in closing, Lisa, what would be your one tip to perhaps <clears throat> leave with people who are in pursuit of feeling happier? Look, for me, it's around identity. It's really around knowing yourself. Um, so to pursue happiness, you need to know what's going to ultimately make you happy. And that might not be, you know, the arbitrary milestones that society establishes for us. You might be quite different and pursuing happiness in a completely different direction. So I would really encourage people to focus on the self um, in a more radical pursuit of happiness interesting perspective mm. Mm. and um, your book happy as why the quest for happiness is making us miserable is a really interesting read i would encourage people if you're interested in this area to pursue that book and read it thank you both so thank much you. and thank i hope you. you have a very happy weekend and happy thank birthday you. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much over to you carl and sylvia <sighs> happy 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 yeah happy, happy as... birthday georgie <laughs> <laughs> happy as bro <laughs>